All right, so I'm going to talk you through the process of filling out this unit circle so that you um, can use this as reference. We are going to look at specific patterns, and my suggestion is that you um, kind of focus on the connections, the reference angles, and the connections that I'm showing with these particular patterns. So we are going to start by filling in our quadrantal angles. So this information here and here, and we are going to color code. So share pens with each other and help each other out. Um, I would strongly encourage you to use different colored pens to kind of mark all of this information just to kind of help you see the patterns. All right, so we know we are at zero degrees and 360 degrees here. Um, in radians, we know that's zero pi and two pi. And we know the coordinate there is one zero. So up here at 90 degrees, that's equivalent to pi over two because pi is 180 degrees and if we divide by two we get 90 and we know that the coordinates at that particular point are 0 1 and then we're going to move off here to the left and we know this is 180 degrees we know this is pi radians and we know the coordinate is at negative 1 0 and then lastly here at 270 degrees we know that is equivalent to 3 pi over 2, and I'll talk to you about that in just a second, and 0, negative 1 is our coordinate there at 270 degrees. We know 270 degrees is 3 pi over 2 because if you know 90 is pi over 2, if we multiply 90 times 3, then we get 270, and so if we multiply pi over 2 times 3, we get 3 pi over 2. So that's how you can remember that. All right, so those are our pretty salmon or orange colored quadrantal angles and all of those measures in degrees and radians and to the coordinates in order to help us with our sines, cosines, and tangents. Let's switch colors. We're going, we're going green. I'm gonna use green for these angles. And I want you to notice and I want you to realize, we've talked about this briefly, but I didn't stress it with you. If you think about reference angles, I want you to think about the fact that there's 30 degree reference angles in each quadrant. And they are going to be basically in the same location, just above or just below the x-axis. They basically form these diagonals here, okay? So the beauty of learning or memorizing what I've asked you to memorize in quadrant one is because if you know that this is 30 degrees, which is equivalent to pi over six, because that's 180 divided by six is 30 degrees, and you have learned that the coordinate at pi over six is the square root of three over two comma one half. So now the beauty of these other angles, the beauty of that piece of information is that we can use that same information to help us fill in these other green angle measures, okay? We know that the coordinate over here has got to be negative square root of three over two comma positive one half because we're going left and then up to that point. We know the coordinate down here has to be negative square root of three over two comma negative one half because it's going left and then down to get to this particular point. And then similarly over here, we're going right and down to get to this particular point. So we are at positive square root of three over two and then negative one half. 
So that's the coordinates. So the coordinate is exactly the same. We just have to consider what the signs will be, whether it's positive or negative in that quadrant for our X and our Y. Let's think about the relationship here with our 30 degree reference angle. So if we're 30 degrees less than 180, then we're at 150 degrees. And if we multiply 30 times five, we get to 150. So that tells us if we multiply pi over six times five, we're gonna get five pi over six, which is the equivalent 30 degree reference angle in quadrant two. All right, similarly, down here, if we go 30 degrees more than 180, we get to 210. And if we think about the fact that 30 times seven gives us 210, then if we multiply pi over six times seven, eeks, come back here, then we get that the radian measure of at 210 degrees is seven pi over six. And then lastly here, look at those, look at that pretty diagonal there. It just helps so much to see those, the patterns here, I think. All right, if we're 30 degrees less than 360, so 360 minus 30 gives us 330 degrees. And then if we do the division and figure out how many times 30 goes into 330, it's 11. So it's 11 pi over six is our radian measure. I want you to notice and I want you to remember, anything pi over six means it is a multiple of a 30 degree reference angle. Whenever you see something pi over six, some number, you know it is a 30 degree reference angle. All right, let's change colors. Let's go pink. I like that pink. And I'm gonna highlight in the middle here, this middle line. And I'm just, I'm highlighting and I'm going diagonal through the origin. So this is the, the middle spoke of the, of the tire, if you wanna think about it that way. You see this as a circle or a tire. You can kind of think about this as the middle spoke. It's the middle diagonal. And let's go ahead and talk about what all of these angle measures would be, these pretty pink ones. So we know here in the middle, let's go back to quadrant one because that's where we're going to start. That's where we focused our attention is quadrant one. So we know that middle angle value is 45 degrees. And we know that that is equivalent to pi over four. 180 divided by four gives us 45 degrees. And we know this is the special angle. This is the special coordinate that has the same numbers for both x and y, which makes it pretty special. So there's my 45 degree angle in quadrant one is square root of two over two and square root of two over two for our x and y. All right, so similarly, we're gonna just work around our triangle. We're gonna, I'm gonna write the coordinate first. So here it's gonna be negative square root of two over two and then positive square root of two over two down here in quadrant three, it's a negative square root of two over two, and then another negative square root of two over two, because it's going left and then down. And then lastly, in quadrant four, we're at a positive square root of two over two, but then we're going down. All right, so that gives us our coordinates and we decided on the signs to make sure that our X's and Y's have the correct signs. Now we need to think about what the corresponding 45 degree reference angles are in each quadrant. And yes, you've got to get these memorized. But these are easy to remember because we're just gonna add 
we start at this 45 degree angle and we're gonna add 90 and that gets us to 135. And if we add 90 again, I'm sorry, yeah. Um, from, he, from the 45, if we add 180 is another way of thinking about that. That's gonna be 225. So you can think of it as adding 90 to the 135 to get to the 225, or you can think about it as 45 to the 225. Sorry about that. I'm kind of jumping the gun and explaining two different things. If we do the 225 and we add 90, you'll get to the 315. Um, the other way of thinking about that, though, is going from the 135 up here in the top left. And if you add 180 to that, you'll get down here to your 315. All right, so those are our degree measures for our 45 degree reference angles. And now we wanna think about our pi over four, whatever it is, pi over four. So 45 times three gives us 135. So this is going to be three pi over four. And then down here, we are going to be at five pi over four. And then lastly, we are at seven pi over four. So 45 times seven gives us 315. I didn't really explain that. 45 times five gives us the five pi over four. There are some other patterns, some other tricks on how you can remember where these are and what the values are, and I will talk with you about those as well. All right, last set. Do we want to go blue or purple? Let's go purple. So I'm going to highlight here in color, and I want to go along this diagonal. These are going to be our 60 degree reference angles. So look how high those are. Those are up closer towards the y-axis. We still put everything in reference to the x-axis though, so don't think we can go from the y. Okay. So there's our pretty purple. And I want you to think, let's think quadrant one to begin with. Oops, I didn't do that. Let's go back here. So I remember if we have some value, some number pi over four, then you know you are dealing with some type of 45 degree reference angle, okay? And then lastly, if you've got some number of pi over three, you know you are dealing with a 60 degree reference angle. Okay, so we're at 60 degrees here, which we know is equivalent to pi over three. And we know that the coordinates at this particular point are one half comma square root of three over two. So let's go fill in those coordinates first. So we know this is going to be negative one half square root of three over two. Down here we're gonna be at negative one half comma negative square root of three over two. And here we're going to be positive first, and then this is negative. All right. We need to talk about our what our 60 degree reference angles are in each of the quadrants. So one way of thinking about this is multiplying by the six, multiplying from the pi over three, the 60 to get to each quadrant. So 180 minus 60 gives us 120. And 60 times 2 gives us 120. 180 plus 60 gives us 240. And we know six, 60 times 4 gives us 240. So we're going to multiply pi over 3 times 4 and get... 
4 pi over 3. And then lastly, if we're at 360 and we subtract 60, we're at 300. Please be careful. It's very easy to get the point at 300 and at 330 confused. Um, so do be careful with that. So 300 is a 60 degree reference angle. And we know that 60 times 5 gives us 300. So as a radian, this is 5 pi over 3. Voila, now you have your full unit circle all filled out and you are ready to answer questions about sines and cosines and tangents.